Amen. While we're standing, lift up your hands. Glory to God. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord God, we once again, we thank you for this space, this place, and this time. God, that you've allowed us to come together to reverence your name, to honor your presence. God, to give you that which is you are so deserving. The glory, the honor, and all of the praise. God, we thank you that it is you who is on our side. For your word tells us if it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, our enemies would have swallowed us up. We thank you, God, for being before us, being behind us, guarding us on every side. God, we thank you for this blessed place, this atmosphere, God, not just in this room, but those that are viewing via live stream. We thank you, Lord God, for their oil that rests on us. We thank you for choosing us for such a time as this. Even in the midst of our imperfections, even in the midst of our shortcomings, God, you saw fit to choose us. One by one, name by name, household by household, God. You have blessed and you have kept us. So, God, we honor you. We reverence you even the more right now. We thank you, Lord God, for a safe place. We thank you for a safe house. We thank you for a people, God, that restoring their reverence to you. And as we do this, God, we thank you for restoring the authority to us. We give you praise right now, God, for the word that you place in our spirit. We thank you for a people that have an ear to hear, but most of our hearts to receive and spirits to contain. God, it is by this word that life should be changed. God, we should walk in new dimensions and new realms of authority in this year, 2022. God, we thank you for turning it around for us. We bless you. We give you all the glory and praise. Now, we bring, we bring in family members even now. As we lift our hands, we give up our will for your will, our desire for yours. Even while this word is flowing today, God, save, deliver, and set free. Make whole from the inside out, household by household. And God, as you do, we're going to continue to praise you. We're going to continue to give you the glory. God, we don't just want the stuff, we want you. Because if we get you, we get the stuff that comes with it. So we thank you, we give you glory, we give you honor, and we give you praise. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. Come on, clap your hands for the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 There's such a freshness in the house, amen. Thank God for each of you in your respective places, amen. Thank God for our praise and worship team of the, the worship and arts ministry for ministering to us in song. Thank God for the prophetic declarations that have gone forth through prayer even earlier today. I thank God for my wife being sensitive and saying what God has placed in her spirit to say and doing what God has said to do. And it is such a great thing. God spoke to us yesterday for those that were in our leadership class. He was restoring our momentum. He's restoring our momentum as we reverence him. That's that thrust forward, that forward movement in him. And as we keep God in the forefront of our life, there are going to be some things, amen. God said, we can ready to walk in new dimensions of authority as believers. And there's, again, going to be a distinction between church goers and believers. Because there's an appetite for the supernatural being developed in those of us that really trust God. In other words, that appetite, I'm saying, we don't want things like they used to be. We know we've, we've had the blessings, we have this and that. We're not seeking titles and positions, but we want, amen, we have an appetite for the supernatural because every promise that has been made, been spoken over my life, somebody say, I want it to come to pass. Everything that God has said concerning me, come on. I want it to come to pass. Amen, we thank God for our viewing the audience. Amen. Faithful and true that they are, many from Texas to Tennessee, come on every Sunday. They're cheering. I can hear them through the live stream. With the mute on my computer, I can still hear some of them because they talk. You can hear their voices because there's a certain slang or they have any. I'm not going to say their names. I'm not going to embarrass them, but they know who they are. Amen. But 
Most of all, I thank God just for being God by himself. Amen. We want to go into the word again. Thank God for my wife. What, we was, what I was laughing about, my wife and I, we talked about time and how we want to do things, even when the presence of God is moving. And I said, babe, I want to be up no later than 1220. And I felt, I felt a push on her while she was introducing me. But I don't know what shifted her. And it was like 1218 and 1219. And the, time, the second was clicking. I looked over there and said, okay, she got about 10 seconds. It was 1256. And then she said, and she said my name. It was 59 seconds and coming into 1220. And I just couldn't do nothing but laugh. And I know she wasn't looking at the clock. It's like it's something that God is bringing us in synchronization. There's a synchronization taking place in the realm of the spirit because the Bible say, we talked about Ephesians 4 and 16, say each gift does its own special work. Everybody does their part and it builds to where we're trying to go. Even after I've ministered the word, there's a part that follows this. But everything had to be synchronized. And I'm grateful to God for synchronization. Amen. Give God a hand praise one more time. Hallelujah. Now, now this week, I'm going to try to do what I said last week. I'm going to try to teach and take my time. Amen. Because I don't know what y'all pulled and snatched me last week. Had me hollering. I look back and look at the video, the clip. But it was a great word from the Lord. Open up your Bibles today real quick. I'm going to give you one passage of scripture. And then you can take your seats. Amen. Last week we talked about, amen, the rewards of reverence, of reverence being restored. Talking about, amen, how we should honor God no matter where we are, what we're dealing with. We talked about the restoration and the reward of reverence. The restoration and the reward of reverence. On last week and this week, for those that are note takers, we're going to talk about the believer's authority restored, being restored. And I'm going to talk about how there's such a difference, amen, when you're gifted and when you are anointed, but when you're walking in kingdom authority with the anointing on your life. Hallelujah. Proverbs 29 and 2, very short passage of scripture. The Bible says, amen, let's read it together, Proverbs 29 and 2, in the King James Version. It says, when the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. The New Living Translation says, when godly people are in authority, the people rejoice. But when the wicked are in power, these words are in sync here. We see authority and we see power. He say they groan. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. I say it's going to be short. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Last week we started uh, this not intended to be a two-part series on the believers talking about, amen, when restoration of reverence to God, when we start to reverence God, we talked about, amen, last week that no matter what we're doing or what we're going through, we still owe God praise. How many of y'all agree with that? We still owe God praise, amen, not for what he does, but most of all but for who he is, amen, because there's some things that happen in our life that could be a lot worse if God didn't honor who, who we were in him. God honors us and we should honor God. Amen. We talked about, amen, restoration being restored. And we talked about even in Psalm 65 how God was, amen, bringing a harvest in certain seasons. But it was all directly connected to our reverence towards him. Somebody said we got to reverence God in this season. Somebody, somebody say true reverence. True reverence moves you to a place, amen, where a, a, a lot of things around you seem to be looking different. Not that you're walking perfect, not that your life, that you have everything in order, but you reverence God. Amen. We get to the point where we really believe that in everything I'm going to give thanks because I reverence God. In the good, the bad, and the ugly, I will acknowledge him. Amen. Because he is God, and besides him, there is none other. Somebody say, I owe him the praise. Amen. Say it again. I owe him the praise. I didn't say we always feel like praising God, but because I rever him. That's why, I don't, and that's why, you know, some of the people might not like this online. That's why in the Baptist church, I, I, I never call men reverend. Because when you look in your Bible, that's, you don't see that, that term in the Bible. It is a scholastic term to reverence toward men. I honor you. The Bible says to give honor to whom honor is due, but I don't call the preacher reverend. Because reverence is always to God. 
Now, that's just me. You can call him what you want to. Your uncle might be a reverend. Dad might be a reverend. Amen. Whatever you all do. But I, I, I honor them. But the, the, the reverence, and we talked about reverence. We talked about that being a deep, a deep feeling of respect. I can respect you and not put you in a place of reverence. Because reverence is set aside solely in my life. Reverence is set aside solely for God. I honor Valencia. The Bible tells me to honor my wife. Amen. And I honor her. Amen. And there is a, a level of deep respect I have for her, but she would never be in the place of God in my life. And so when I put God in his rightful place, I hope you all taking notes. When I put God in his rightful place, there is an authority. Amen. A, a, an order of things that happen. And if you're taking notes, amen, you need to write this down because when I reverence him, we said that reverence is a feeling of or an attitude of deep respect. And then it says it is a gesture. There is an action that follows my reverence. I'm hurting, but I reverence him. I'm going through, but I'm still going to go down prostrate and pray to him. Amen. Things are not going like I want him, want, want them to go, but I'm still going to reverence him. Amen. And when I reverence him, it puts me in a place where he restores authority in my life. Here's the part we've been missing. Here's the part we've been missing. You can't reverence God without repentance. All right. Come on, y'all. Y'all looking at me funny. Reverence starts with repentance. So we talk about the Bible says when the righteous in authority, amen, we've been declared the righteousness of God by default. We are the, the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. This is 2 Corinthians 5 and 21. We've been, Jesus was made sin for us that we might be called the righteousness of God. When we receive him, amen, we assume a place of righteousness. Now that you earned it. If we keep trying to earn it, we'd be out here doing some crazy stuff. We'll still be judging one another. We'll still be calling folks saved, who holy, who not holy. You got on pants, you ain't holy. Holy ain't got nothing to do with your clothes. Come on. So, 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 said, We have been made the righteousness of God. It's for he made him to be sin for us. God made Christ to be sin for us who knew no sin, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Somebody say, in Jesus. So here's, here's the order of things, and I want you to write this down very quickly. Amen. The order of things, reverence, reverence, reverence starts with repentance. Reverence starts with repentance. I cannot rever God until I repent. Tell your neighbor, say, you can, there's no reverence without repentance. It starts with repentance. This is going to be the notes. We put them on, we putting the groceries on the little carousel, the little belt there, uh, conveyor belt. Reverence starts with repentance. Repentance brings realignment. We're going to talk about all this. Realignment causes obedience. And obedience releases authority. Not my giftedness. Not who I'm connected to. Not how much money I got in the bank. This does not give you authority. And there is an authority that the believer needs to have in this hour to take charge of your household. There's a demonic force released against the people of God, amen, that's causing us to be medicated. Come on, somebody. Causing us, amen, to trust more in therapists than we trust in Holy Spirit. I'm not saying you don't need a therapist, but you need to have the right therapist. Some of us go to the doctor, they recommend stuff, amen, before you have an opportunity to correct what the issue is. They give you medication, and you have not consulted God, but you have authority. The Bible says, amen, we should lay hands on the sick, and we shall recover, amen. But we don't try these things because we don't know the authority that we have. Somebody touched my body and said, I got authority over this. Give me a Kleenex, son. I got authority over this. Y'all not saying like y'all believe y'all tired? Some of you got sickness, amen, you got ailments in your body, and amen, you've medicated, but it ain't getting better. Come on, because you're not speaking with authority. When you know how you have authority, there is a boldness that comes over you. There's almost a, a righteous indignation that takes over your life. People say you're arrogant. People say you have an attitude. It's not that I have an attitude. I just walk in authority. When I walk in places, amen, I'm not talking about me, I'm talking about the authority that's in me. When I enter into places, I shift atmospheres. Things begin to change because I show up. I wish y'all could say something in here. Amen, things, be, things begin to shift as soon as I hit a region. 
When we're flying different places, amen, my wife and I, we start praying against the atmosphere. We start praying against the demonic forces. We get to a hotel. We start praying over the grounds. Everything that happened before it was a hotel there. We don't know if it was a witchcraft, amen, a place of voodoo, a witch doctors. We don't know where it was, but we pray over the area because of the authority that is in us, and we shift the atmosphere. We set the atmosphere that we want because we walk in kingdom authority. So when reverence is in place, kingdom authority is restored. Somebody say, I need my authority. How many times you had the money, but you didn't have the authority? You had the word in your belly, or you thought it was a word, but you didn't have the authority. You had all the right connections, but didn't have the authority. When the righteous are in authority, in other words, God needs righteous people in place so that the people can rejoice. Watch this. It says, but when the wicked beareth rule, the people mourn. Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Amen. Matthew 28, 18 and 19. Grab that real quick, everybody. We're going to read this because I want, to know who, want you to know who got authority. I feel the Holy Ghost. I don't know what y'all feel, but I feel God in here. I feel him. I feel him. I feel him. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. When the righteous are in authority, the people rejoice. Somebody say, when I'm in authority. Everybody around me going to rejoice. <laughs> they don't know why they happy. They don't know why stuff happening. But when I show up on the scene, I felt something when you came. Tell some people start telling you stuff like this. When you showed up, something different happened. There's something different about you. That's the righteousness that is in me. Some people think we bragging, but that's just the righteousness that is in me. Matthew 28 and 18, it says, And Jesus came and spake unto them, saying, All power is given unto me. Y'all got that? Where does he say this power is given unto me? Where? In heaven and in earth. Amen. Amen. In heaven and in earth. He said, uh, all power is given to me in eternity and in time. He said, so I'm in control of everything. Watch the flip. Then he said, go ye therefore. He takes his, his authority, his power, and he flips and he gives it to the disciples. In eternity and in time. Y'all not getting this. What are you saying? He said, the Bible tells us whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. So what I bind in time is bound in eternity. Man, I'm preaching better than y'all agreeing. So I can put stuff on hold that's supposed to happen because I'm in right authority. I'm in right relationship. Accident about to happen. Holy Spirit say don't go. The accident intended for you sent by the devil. Holy Spirit say don't go. You think you're running late, but Holy Spirit is holding you up. And when you get to the place you thought you were going, the truck flipped over in the road because you heard Holy Spirit say in the authority and you told you to stop. And you still get to the place you were trying to get to on time while you was running late and you still arrived five minutes early. So he said, all authority is given to me in heaven and in earth. Then he said, go ye therefore. He said, look, I'm giving you this authority. He said, teach with this authority, with this power. Teach all nations, not just the people you know, but people that are looking at you. Look at that. Somebody say, you teaching right now. Look at somebody tell them, say, you teaching right now. Somebody is patterning your life based upon how you live. Amen. And we careless with how we operate in our authority. We happy with being churchgoers. We're happy with being churchgoers. Come on, somebody. Amen. We talked about the restoration of reward and reverence. When I reverence God, God in turn gives me authority. Somebody say, I need that authority in my life. Come on. Where, where are some places you feel like you need to speak to release that authority? Stuff you've been waiting on to happen. You sowed a seed for it, but the seed was absence of authority. It was in faith, but you didn't have the authority to believe it. Because you did it wavering. You didn't did it as one that's having authority. I'm going to show you in scripture how Jesus did one, and the people that saw him say he did it as one having authority. <laughs> Man, this is good to me. Authority comes from the Greek word exousia. Exousia. That sounds deep, doesn't it? The Greek word exousia, amen, which means, amen, a moral authority or influence. God has given you influence. It is spiritual power. Spiritual power. It is earthly power. Exousia is also a right or privilege. 
This right of privilege, as in Matthew 28, 18, and 19, was conferred upon me, delegated to me, when Jesus said, go ye therefore. I know he said it to them, but somebody said, but he was talking to me. To every disciple, he was talking, he said, go ye therefore. So he gave me an authority. He, 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 he conferred, or he deputized me with this exousia, delegated authority, to operate in the earth. Are y'all still here? So why are we so quiet and scared when people start with well, I, I, I get tired of believers telling me, you know, uh, this COVID thing, I don't believe in the vaccination. Well, you believe what you're going to believe. I'm going to get vaccinated. Not on my vaccine, I'm boosted. I don't believe that stuff. Well, don't believe it. People didn't believe polio either. And they were paralyzed. People, <laughs> come on. Some of, when I, we joined the army, we got in a line. Got in a line, in a sim like a similar line like cattle, and walked through there. Pach -ch -pach -ch -pach -ch. We didn't ask nothing. But now it's a setup. Now it's a setup. They're trying to kill us. Well, they might have been trying to kill you then, but you're still going. Come on. And now we got to be deep about it. Got to study everything. I'm studying stuff, but believe me. But let me tell you something. When God has given me authority, there's nothing sickness can't enter my body and live. I might wrestle with it for a minute. I'm going to figure it out. But there's an authority in me that commands it to cease. Everything touches this body dies. Y'all still with me? So tell your neighbor, so I'm walking in my exousia now. Say it like this. I'm walking in my exousia now. Because of reverence, believers are walking in restored authority. And here's what it says. Reverence, amen, starts with repentance. So repentance means I'm turning away from what I used to do. I'm not just stopping. And the Bible tells us that godly sorrow work of repentance. Repentance does not happen just because I feel bad about it. Repentance happens when I'm determined not to do it again. Repent, to repent means to turn away from. Repentance is the process of staying away from it. Don't be sour on Sunday and go back and do it on Wednesday. Repentance brings realignment. Realignment means to restore or change to a previous or a different position. God wants to restore us to a previous position. The authority that believers had in the beginning. I talked about this last week that Adam gave up because the enemy tricked him. Watch this. I'm going to mess some of y'all up. God told Adam that he can eat of every tree in the garden except the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. Now, I want y'all to go back and study this. Y'all say, Pastor said some crazy stuff. But somebody told me, said, uh, the tree of knowledge of good and evil wasn't planted by God. This is what somebody told me. This is what I'm just saying. Because when Satan and his angels were kicked out where they went, to the earth, they went into a place that was already created. The earth was without form and void. So when someone was put there, it was put there after God gave permission and began speaking. Satan has created authority as well. They create things to look like God. The Bible says, amen, there's no great thing that his angels present themselves as ministers of light. So Satan had influence over the tree of a knowledge of good and evil because God did not speak of anything of evil. So when they partook of it, they partook of that which was not allowed to partake of. Oh, y'all looking at me real crazy now. <laughs> they took of something that they were not allowed to partake of because God knew what would happen to them when they take of it. And Satan tricked them, flipped the word on them and say, you will be, you won't be, you will be just like God. But they was already like God. God didn't have no good and evil in him. It was only good. Evil came from that fallen angel. Teach us, apostle. That just hit my spirit. Y'all write it down. I'm going back and study this. Why would you go back and study? I never heard it like that. I just heard it a couple of days ago. I don't know if I got to study myself, but that's what I believe. Y'all ready to go back to this uh, authority? <laughs> Come on. When I talked about twos last week, the two and two, amen, I said don't do by 22 because that's double what? Confusion. So if we go two, the number of unity, union, man and man, man and woman, they, they, they two, but they become one in God. There was two different ones, so he made them two, made them one in him. 
But the 22 is 11 double. 11 is confusion, chaos. So if we do 22, we got double chaos. Man, I, I'm just going to stop. <laughs> let, me, let, me give y'all, let me give y'all some authority. Go to Mark, Mark, the first chapter. Man, I just, I just met, Holy Spirit, you just did, God, you just did something to me. I wouldn't intend to say that. I just got scripture written up here, you know, some definitions. Mark, the first chapter, verse 21 through 28. This is where the Holy Spirit really got me with this authority. And see, this is what you got to understand. When you walk in authority, demons are going to recognize you. When you come in the house and that demon came home with your, from school with your child, and y'all be ready to beat the child, but it's a demon that's acting up. Y'all there? Mark 1, 21. It says what? And they came to, and they went to Capernaum, and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered to the synagogue and taught. That's what it, that's what it say, right? What am I doing right now? Teaching. And they were astonished at his doctrine. Y'all kind of astonished a little bit? For he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes, not as the religious people. He taught both. He taught different. He taught, amen, as he was teaching, they were judging him, trying to study him while he was teaching. He said stuff to them while he was talking to them that made them want to go and research what he was saying, even while he was speaking to them. (laughs) Pastor Laura laughing at me. I told you, I ain't got COVID now. I just got to run in nose now. <laughs> Hallelujah. Every time I start preaching, this happens. He, he, he's not, not as a scribe. Somebody say, not as a religious people. It just, I'm sweating. It's coming out everywhere, y'all. Amen. And then in verse 23, y'all read loud so they can hear you on the screen. It says, and, and, and there was in that synagogue with an unclean spirit, and he cried out. Now, he said that to the man. He just teaching. He cried out, what did he say? Saying, let us alone. Who cried out? The unclean spirit. Jesus is not talking to this spirit. He came to teach those that were in the synagogue. But the, those, the religious folks recognized him as one with authority. They, were, they didn't recognize him as one that was religious. They recognized him as one with authority. And it's, it's cried, the spirit cried out, said what? Let us alone. What did he say? What have we to do with thee? Thou Jesus of Nazareth. Now he's sarcastic. But watch, the, watch how he recognized the authority. He said, art thou come to destroy us? I know thee, who thou art. Somebody say, demons are going to know you. Spirits are going to know you when you embrace the full authority that God has given you. They're going to know you on sight. When a demon in your boss, when you go to work and that demon starts showing up, and your boss loves you, but that demon can't stand you. The boss can't let you go, but the demon don't want you there. So the struggle is real. There's a wrestle in him. Amen. They want to keep you, but something speaking in the back of his mind talking about let you go. He said, the Holy One of God. Verse, verse 25, what did it say? And Jesus rebuked him, saying what? Hold thy peace. Come out of him. <laughs> he ain't touch him. That's why I'm going to be all the people down. I say, do you want to be delivered? If they don't talk to me, if that person don't talk to me, I'm not laying, I'm not putting on all on you. I'm not laying hands on you. I'm not touching you. First question I want to ask is, do you want to be delivered? We asked a girl, did she want to be delivered one time? And she said, yes. She was, I said, say it again. She said, yes, her head was shaking. No, that demon was shaking her head, but her voice speaking out of her said yes. So I said, that's a fight there. By the authority in me. The blood, I plead the blood of Jesus over your mind. And the demon started talking to me. I said, we silence you. I adjure you in the name of Jesus. The authority. Watch authority. The power to adjudicate. That's what authority means. The power to set order. (laughs) Write it down. I'm an adjudicator. I don't know if that's a word, but that's who I am. Y'all better catch this. We're not going to live a week this year. I'm going to tell you, I did something this year, and it's kind of off subject. I, I, some years ago, I got a, um, a fake billion dollar note. I've been keeping it in my little box inside my bed. Last night, Holy Spirit told me to take it out. 
and put it on my mirror in my bathroom. Watch it, come to the house. Put it right there in the corner. Never did I had it for years. Now, some of y'all might not know, but I've been close in assets and everything, close to that million dollar mark, but God said, I'm going to have this in my hand. He said, if you can put your hands on it, I can put it in your hands. And see, I never used to talk about stuff like this because, you know, trying to be humble and people see the glory on your life and see the oil on your life and try to be humble. But God said, this year you got to walk in boldness because there are people need to see, not just see it on you, they need to know how you did it. They're waiting to see. So I put it on the mirror. So the next time y'all that, that come over there every once again and get to walk that far in, you look up there. As soon as you walk in, look up to the right. Million dollar note. Ask God to give me some more and put them all over the house. No, that's me. Why can't I tell you now? What I said in November? God, we're speaking back in October, November. God said, well, some things we're going to do here. If you say it, he'll do it. And you speak it with authority. I believe God wants us to have these things. Okay, church folks going to miss this. Church people going to have authority in this season. Church, people, church folk will be somebody I rebuke you. Amen. We're going to talk about that too. Let me hurry up. Amen. Watch this. So, so, so when you're in authority, even demons recognize you. Jesus said, come out of him, hold thy peace, and come out of him. Verse 25. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, what happened? Somebody said it again. He came out of him. Look at verse 27. And they were all amazed. And so much that they questioned among themselves, say, what thing is this? What new doctrine is this? What did it say? For with authority he commanded him even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him. Ooh. I didn't saw that. See, somebody say, ooh. <laughs> even unclean spirits, crazy stuff will obey you when you walk in authority. Y'all ain't know that? I told God I'm going to be crazy this year. Stuff, that he, stuff he used to tell me to say, I said, God, that don't sound right. Anybody like me ain't got to sound right sometimes? You know, you, you got to be able to figure it out before you do it. Jesus didn't go to the synagogue for the unclean spirit. The unclean spirit came to interrupt Jesus' assignment. He just started talking. Jesus said, be quiet. Hush your mouth. He didn't give me no attention. Then he started you, then he, he kept talking. Jesus said, come out of him. Look at these religious people talking about even the old, the unclean spirits, and they obey him. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region of Galilee. Don't forget that last note right there. Immediately, because he assumed this new authority. Immediately, because he walked in this authority, his fame went out. Look at somebody say, you can't hide no more. <laughs> when you start walking in this authority... You can't have false humility any longer. You can't be quiet when God be saying you to speak, Chris. He say, say this while you're here, while you're standing here. You can't be saying, God, I'm, I'm just going to let, let you do it. God, God said, I gave you the authority to say it. I gave you the authority. You don't like how it's going in your, your workplace? Start speaking to it. I thank you for the front desk. I want a desk with an office. I'm tired of looking at the wall. God, I thank you. This is what some of y'all need to start saying. Because some people are getting rich off of you. God said, I thank you for my own. If I'm good at what I do, I thank you for my own. I prophesy endless, endless opportunities. Amen. For those, amen, that really want to do something for God. Amen. You've been doing it for somebody else. You know how the system works. God said, flip it and do it for yourself. Why be the employee when you can be the employer? Man, I look at this scripture, I say, now, if demons recognize the authority, why church folks don't recognize it? People satisfied with followers and likes, but no authority. <laughs> that man came out running. See, that scripture says in New Living Translation, suddenly a man in the synagogue who was possessed with an evil spirit cried out. Jesus ain't even talking to him. He just started crying because the authority showed up. 
Why I got loud in here? Because you showed up. Yeah. What's all these funny noises? You, you showed up. They know you here. Yes. Come on, y'all. I used to try to go in place, you know, I'm 6'3", a little bit more, bald-headed, you know, got this beautiful woman on my arm. I'm trying to get in place and sit down. And they say, Pastor, yeah, y'all come up to the front. We're good right here. God said, don't tell people when God call you forward, amen, don't, don't push yourself to the back. Watch that, watch this. Sometimes, watch it. Sometimes people gonna call you up because they think they're gonna get something from you that they're looking for, but God gonna cause you to shift in atmosphere. Uh-huh. You gotta have some words. And I'd be like, you sure? Because I'm not getting ready to speak blessings. I see a whole lot going on in here. Y'all go, y'all go ahead and do what y'all doing. I just came for a word, but if you ask me to speak, I'm gonna say what God tells me to say. So everybody asks me to come preach this year, I'm going to say, are you sure? Are you sure? Because you've been lying to the folks talking about God get ready to bless them and you know they're living in sin. God's not going to bless you until you repent. Somebody say, the demons recognize me. <laughs> Amen. Jesus got famous just in that instance because they, they, the scribes say, he speaks. He say, say, what matter of doctrine is this? What that's telling me that the people in the synagogues had the wrong doctrine. Pastor, Pastor what you saying? The demons have been sitting in church with them the whole time, talking and rocking and speaking in tongue with them, and they preaching to the demon. But when Jesus showed up on the scene, the demon hollered out at Jesus, Why are you here? The man, the man possessed with a demon was going to church with him. Sitting right there among them. Amening. What they saying. Go ahead and preach. The demon. But when Jesus showed up. Jesus why are you here? Look at somebody. Say, They're going to recognize you this year. I, I cannot afford. Amen. To contaminate what is on my life. Trying to be popular. So y'all be telling me this crazy stuff? They possibly you being mean. No, I love you. You got a lying demon. Stop lying to me. I rebuke you in the name of, I rebuke that spirit in the name of Jesus. He just mean now. No, that's love. Because you without chastisement, the Bible says. Mm -hmm. Y'all still with me? <laughs> so this spirit recognized who Jesus was. Because he won in authority. Amen. Your authority is going to be challenged. Hallelujah. Your authority is going to be challenged. Watch this. Go to Luke. Luke 20. We just read scripture. Tell your neighbor, say, we just reading the Bible. <laughs> He's hollering a little bit, but we just read him. I want you to have this. If you say and you're not religious, you're going to do some stuff this year. Stuff I've been waiting on God to do. <laughs> he already told me to do it. He's given me everything. That pertaineth to life and godliness. Amen. I, I told my wife, baby, tell me. I told him last night when I pulled out that million dollar note. And when I put it on my mirror. Not that I just pull it out. Y'all gonna talk about me now. I, Lord told me to straighten it out because it was wrinkled, had a couple of tears in it. Visited. Ma'am, I took that thing and put it on the ironing board. I was ironing our clothes. I put that note. I ironed it out. It's flat. Jay did look nice and smooth. Got a couple of tears in it. We got some tape. Fix the tears on it. Taped it on all four sides. When I walk, if I walk in here one day and, and I hold, have that fake note, y'all gonna know what done happened. It didn't manifest. And I ain't gonna even say nothing. I'm just gonna I'm gonna come up here with my computer like this. I'm gonna have it taped right here. Y'all gonna see it up there. Say, Hallelujah. I ain't gonna even say nothing. Some folks gonna be mad because they don't know how to celebrate it because they don't believe it. I speak of that as one with authority. God told me, God said to said that your, your, your favor, your character is going to open doors where your money can't take you. I got folks at the bank running from us right now. Because they gave me some crazy numbers. Like I'm just saying, that's all it is? We'll pay it. No, you're going to tell me how you got to this. 
Because I've been keeping, I've been keeping count too. I want all of it back. <laughs> Let me get to the scripture. Glory to God. Get back to the word, Apostle. Gotcha. Luke 20. Y'all got me hollering again. And it came to pass in, that on one of those days, <laughs> somebody said one of those days. He was teaching up there and the demons started talking. Now, here we go again. One of those days, it, it, he taught the people in the temple and preached the gospel. Watch this. The chief priests and the elders came upon, the chief priests and the scribes came upon him with the elders. <laughs> the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders came up to him and, they, and spake unto him, Tell us by what authority do thou do these things? Do thou these things? Or who is that giveth thee these authority? Who, who gave this? <laughs> Y'all got this. It's unfamiliar to them. God said to the people that will be real with me in this year, that will come clean and say, oh, stay away dirty. God says, you repent and return to me. Amen. That's an authority going to be released in your life. That church folk going to say, by what authority are you doing these things? Who gave you this authority? What does it say in verse 3? Everybody read it for me because I ain't got it. What does it say in verse 3? He answered him and said what? I will also ask you one thing and answer me. What did he say? He said, look, are you asking me a question while I get my authority? I'm going to ask you something. And you answer me first. The baptism of John, was it of, was it of God or was it of man? They couldn't know because they just follow religion. John came on the scene and shook everything up. They didn't like John and they didn't like Jesus. By the time Jesus is preaching, John is in jail. They want to put you in bars. But there are going to be some folk. There are going to be some folk going to see the oil on you. They're going to try to imitate what they see. <laughs> They're going to be trying to do it. I saw Rashad and DeAndre. I saw them just laying hands. They just bought a house, but they were laying hands on another house. Did God say he would give us houses we didn't have to build? On, Why you, can, you bought one and you think that's all he wants you to have? My wife and I was talking about, man, when I, I share this a lot because people were watching. We were talking about we used to rent cars or go to the car lot, want to test drive, can't afford it, and take the car we test driving and drive into neighborhoods we, didn't afford to we couldn't afford to live in. Take our kids to Dairy Queen, and they share a hamburger. Three kids share a hamburger with that meal. They share a meal. We share a little shake thing, and we ride in the car and point at houses that we want. And not one of them houses match what we live at now. Not one of them cars match what we drive now. And I did dec decree and declare that my children shall supersede where I am. As they, come in, as they come into proper alignment, repent, and come into proper alignment, and reverence God like they should, everything in their life is going to come in, and everything that's been held up, y'all better say it, everything that's been held up for my family, yeah. glory to God, going to be released. Everything that's been held up. It's released. God said he's going to open up new realms of authority. New portals of authority. When you start speaking, the angels are going to be pushing it out, pushing it out like it's on a conveyor belt. Everything been held up. They're not going to ask you for nothing. They're going to be telling you, Mom and Dad, I'm sending you on vacation. Mom, I'm paying for you a whole vacation. I'm sending you away for the week. I, I, I dream. I dream one night. I, I woke up and I woke up and started walking through the house. I woke up and started walking through the house saying, "I thank you, Lord." The, 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 in my dream, my kids came to my wife and me and said, "We gonna send y'all a week a week away." I was like, "Man, quit playing." Cause, you know, because we always talk about taking family trips. I said, "Baby, we won't take one if they can't pay for their own trip. We're not gonna do it." They'll pay for certain things. Well, you get in the thousands. They think there's a lot of money sometimes. But they say we sending y'all away for a week. And this one over here popped up and said. You know what, Dad? We, the whole family going to go. They was paying for stuff. We had to come out of our pocket for them. When I woke up by that dream and started walking through the house, I started saying, thank you, Lord. I don't know when it's going to happen, but I speak it over him. 
I speak as one with authority. And people are going to see you doing it. They acting real funny over there. No, we got authority. But there going to be people trying to do like you because you're going to be rebuking them spirits off your children. You're going to be rebuking sickness off your body. And people are going to try to imitate you. And the devil going to tear them up. Y'all believe me? It's Bible. Can I show you in the Bible? <laughs> Go to Acts 19. Acts 19. We're almost finished. Acts 19. I got to go there with myself, y'all, because the spirit, the spirit is telling me. Mm -mm -mm. Y'all get anything out of this? The hotter I get, the louder it gets in my Ah, God. God told me, God told me to take my time this year. And strengthen, the, and strengthen them that remain. We're going to shake foundations in the authority that we're walking in. We're going to shake foundations. Are y'all still here? Amen. Acts. <laughs> Acts 19, 15 through 17. Hallelujah. When you get there, say amen. We're going to read this with authority. Because church will be tripping. They be tripping because they, they repeat stuff that they see that sound good. I was, watching a, I was watching a video clip the other day. I got this young man. I'm not going to say his name because I want nobody trying to mess with him. Amen. But he like to expose these, these, these wicked preachers that, that, that got gifts. He keep posting videos of them. And when he posts stuff, he got scripture backing what he's saying. And so they come at him. And I say, man, I told him one day, I said, bro, when you need some security, let me know because they're going to come and get you. And uh, he exposed, he, showed, he posted a video the other day. This, it was a bunch of people on the platform, preachers and prophets. And they were all in close proximity of one another, prophesying and speaking and hollering. Nobody had a mask on. They were laying hands on each other. Nobody had a mask on. And he was prophesying to a gentleman who just got out of the, out of the paper for doing something crazy. All you got to do is search their name. you see what they did recently. But now he's telling them, you get ready to plant churches and shift nations and this and that. I said to myself, he should give him time to recover first. Even if it's a word, it might not be a word for now. See, we do stuff for popularity to get people to follow us. But it, watch this. If you follow me in this season, 2022, you're going to follow me because of the authority that's on my life but you're going to follow me with a reverence as well. Because you can be carrying my bag and I can rebuke you. You can be driving me to the, to the airport and I can correct you for talking too much or repeating something that hinders your atmosphere. Because something bad happened, I'm not going to automatically talk bad about something. I'm going to say what God said. And people are going to try to imitate you. This authority that you walk in, somebody says it's not for everybody. This authority for those that first, this authority for those that first, number one, repent. Repent and return to God. Repentance brings what? Reverence. Reverence, amen, does what? Re releases us into a, place, into a place of realignment. Realignment causes us to walk in obedience. Because the Bible says if we are willing and obedient, Isaiah 119, if we're willing and obedient, we shall eat the good of the land. It does not say we might. And I'm not talking about reluctantly obedient. I'm talking about bringing this flesh and this thought process into alignment that makes it obey. Discipline. Discipline myself where I readily obey God. And obedience releases authority. Obedience is an authorization for those that are the righteous of God. 2 Corinthians 5 and 21 says that Jesus became sin for us. He that knew no sin became sin for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. Are you in him? I'm in Jesus. When I'm in him, I am the righteousness of God. So I'm authorized to go in places. And people think my doctrine is strange. 
I'm authorized to go in places. Him and the big spirit, spirit starts calling, screaming out because I showed up. Y'all still with me? We well, at the end now. Tell your neighbor, say this ain't for everybody. <laughs> Acts 19, verse number 15. Let's, let's read it together for those at home so they can see with us. I know they're still following. It says, and an evil spirit answered and said, watch this, this was our seven sons of Sceva. Let me back that up just to teach. Just to teach. Because I don't want y'all to miss that part. It says, amen, <laughs> a certain, there was a certain of the vagabond Jews, exorcists took upon them a call over which they had evil spirits. The name of the Lord Jesus saying, we adjure you. <laughs> we adjure you by Jesus whom Paul preached. By Jesus who? Whom Paul preached. Not that we know. And there were seven sons of Sceva, a Jew, a chief priest, which did, which did, did so. And the evil spirit answered and said, y'all see that? What did the spirit say to him? First of all, let's let back up. Jesus didn't have to say nothing when he showed up. The spirit started talking. Here these jokers trying to do what Jesus did. They're trying to do what Chris did. They're trying, they're trying to do what Tima did. They say, they say uh, Jesus I know. And, and, and Paul I know. But who are you? What authority are you walking in? Where's your authorization? <laughs> you trying to do something you haven't been authorized to do. Thank you, baby. I like that. You out of your jurisdiction. That's like people trying to be apostles ahead and master being brother. Can y'all read for me? My eyes just got dim. What it say? He says, he said, they say, but who are you? Then what it say in verse 16? Did what? He didn't cry out. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't leave them. The spirit jumped on them. They want somebody in the name of Jesus. In the spirit of God. That's why y'all better quit laying hands on people so quick. I bind you in the name of Jesus. And then you go home and start acting crazy. Can't sleep at night. <laughs> Let's read the December talk about this crazy stuff happening in church. It leaped on them, what it says. And overcame them and did what? And prevailed against them. So they fled out their house. What? Whooped their clothes off of them. It's the Bible. I ain't write that. <laughs> Let's go back to Jesus who's authorized. He walks in, teaching to the scribes, teaching to the people. The spirit sitting in the corner. They've been in church all week, been in this revival with them. And then there was Jesus, let's just say Jesus was the keynote speaker on that Friday night service. They've been having revival since Wednesday. The scribes and all of those have been preaching and teaching chief priests. But then Jesus showed up on Friday night. The spirit been there the whole time. Jesus, why are you here? He been amening all week. They've been having a good time running and shouting, sowing seed and spitting and getting it and all that. But then Jesus showed up, the spirit wanted to cry out to Jesus. Come on. But then on this particular one, this man said, I remember what they said Jesus did. Jesus didn't say nothing. But he said he them in the in, in the name of Jesus by who Paul preached. Paul been preaching about Jesus now. I rebuke you in that Jesus Paul was preaching about. Jesus I know, Paul I know, but who are you? What's your insignic that tells me that you authorized to operate like this? Are you repentant? Are you in alignment? Are you walking in obedience? So you're just going to do it because you've seen it done. <laughs> Man, tell your neighbor, say, better quit playing. It's dangerous. And I'm not doing it. I'm not accepting every assignment that people call me to. They don't ask me, you know, so people don't ask you to, uh, to come to an assignment. They ask you how much you charge to come. My question is, did God tell you to bring me? 
Because you can't afford my oil, the oil of my life. You can't, you can't buy me. So when I show up, you know, I tell you, first of all, get, get my honorary in my front, because when I finish, you're not going to want to give it to me. Me and, me and my dear sister fell out for a season. She gave a prophetic word. You talked about that a little bit earlier. She gave a prophetic word. Amen. Uh, last night we seen it. It was a replay. I'm gonna, y'all, y'all go back and watch it. Amen. And, and Dr. Kiva Hampton, we fell out for one season because she asked me to preach at a service. And I asked her, when I showed up, I seen so much stuff. I said, you sure you want me to speak? And I released what God said. And she got up and came back. She said, you know me by the spirit. We had some words back and forth. We didn't talk for about a year, maybe two or three years. We had to mature and get it right. Now I drown a fish for her. I'll kill a brick for her now. But we had to mature to get past a disagreement. Y'all follow what I'm saying? I went as one in authority. Not just saying she wasn't mature enough, but some stuff I seen she shouldn't have had to deal with. Y'all, can't, y'all, y'all, I'm lost some of y'all. Let me, let me finish this in the New Living Translation. It says... <laughs> But one time when they tried it, on verse 15, the evil spirit replied, I know Jesus, I know Paul, but who are you? Man, I don't know nothing about you. You went to who church? Who trained you? (laughs) Who you sat under? (laughs) Man, you better go back over and sit under them some more. This is... I'm getting ready to close. That's why I'm slowing down, y'all. It said, then, then the man with the evil spirit leaped on them, overpowered them, and attacked them with such violence that they fled from the house, naked and battered. He ripped them jokers up. The man beat them. And that's what the Bible says. So he going just popping them. Just like, y'all ever seen that, that, uh, that, that, that TikTok thing? And this guy was in the backyard, and this little girl said something to this man, and he slapped the little girl. Then her brother came up and said, why you did that? The next person, he just started, this spirit was slapping them around just like, like they want a conveyor belt. Because they're trying to use an authority that they were not authorized. Now let's bring this to us. This authority that you're going to operate in is not given to you based upon the amount of scripture you memorize. It's not given to you based upon, amen, your title or your position. This authority is being released to the believers who, number one, reverence God. In the midst of my imperfections, I still honor him. When I miss it, I don't let pride talk me and cause me to stay in a misplace. I quickly, somebody say, I quickly repent. I don't repent after I get caught. I repent while I'm in it. I repent because I know it's out of order. Come on, I quickly repent. Repentance restores me. It don't restore how I feel. It restores because my heart is right. I might not feel restored, but when I repent, when God is sorrow, work, repentance, when I repent, it restores me. This restoration puts me back into realignment. I get back in place with God. Alignment is synchronization. Heartbeats match. My heartbeat matches his heartbeat. My will matches his will. His purpose and plan for my life come into alignment. Thank you, Lord. Then I start walking in his new authority. So much authority that people think it's arrogance. And it's just confidence. It's confidence. Knowing this. That he that has begun a good work in you is able to perform it to the day of Jesus Christ. And so what is God saying to us? He said, when I get you to the point where you're not trying to imitate people, where your relationship is personal, where you may not do it like the person on your left or your right, but you're serious about what you do, and you are intentional about what you do, And what you are doing is on purpose. The Bible scriptures talk about one fighteth as 
fighting in the wind. I don't fight like one that's just flapping in the wind. I know what I'm doing. And what I don't know, I won't pretend. I'm going to learn this. This new realm of authority, I'm going to practice this authority. <laughs> Somebody said, I'm going to practice this authority. When you start practicing something new, you don't do big stuff real quick. We used to, we used to, we, you start to do small things. You know, I look at my sister-in-law over there. I love her so much, and I aggravate her too much sometimes. Amen. We used to try to go swimming, and we told uh, Pastor Laura, take her glasses off. She said, I can't see. We thought my we, she can't see, like, far away. She said, I can't see. So we would splash her with the water. She'd be freaking out. Hold, even in the shallow part, she'd hold on to the side of the water like this. If the boy to get back right here, she's going back the other way. I can't see. I can't swim. Y'all splashing me. There's too much going on. Now she's graduated. She walk out in the ocean now. But she started with little stuff. Now don't splash her now. <laughs> She'll try to splash you, but don't splash her back. I'm saying all that to say this. No one that's in God for real should be defeated. There are going to be some setbacks. Setbacks to me are setups. Gives me an opportunity to regroup and see how did I fall to this place. Because we are imperfect people submitted to a perfect God. So we're going to make some serious mistakes in this walk. Here you go, son. We're going to make some serious mistakes. We're going to have some serious misses. I miss quite often, to be frank. I miss quite often. Why? Because I keep telling y'all, my, my main problem, I know what my problem is, I'm an intellectual. You know what I'm saying, problems? I have, to, I have to know what it is. If I can't see the whole thing, come on, you, know, you understand, don't you? If I can't see the whole thing, I'm like, okay, God said move forward, but God, I don't see how it's going to work. I'm just jumping in now. When I know it's God, I'm jumping in. This is the time. This is the season. For believers, this, this year, 2022, the year, man, the year when God going to, it's, it's going to be a year of acceleration for a lot of us. Don't be that one sitting on the sideline watching. Come on. I don't really know what to do. Get in the game. You can't learn how to do it if you didn't ever jump in. Speaking about water, I used to be, I used to be, I had this like little jealousy of my wife when we were, we were young teenagers and dating. Because if you don't know it or not, a possible issue, she got a, like a fish in nature. She can swim. She loved water. And so we would go to the pool. Remember when we go to the Y, you got to jump in and trade the water and swim across. I couldn't trade, I could swim, but I couldn't trade that good. So she would jump, jump off. I was pretty off the diving board, come up be Swim to the other side. I asked him, I said, can I just jump off the side? He said, no, you got to jump off the diving board. So I jumped off, hold up my nose. and nobody <laughs> Get up to the top of the water, tread a little bit and start swimming. He said, no, go back and tread again. I couldn't tread the water that good. And man, I started going to the pool by myself, jumping in, you know, six feet, eight feet, tread a little bit, go to the side. I tread close to the side so when I get tired, I can grab the side and kiss my breath. I kept on starting with the small stuff. Then all of a sudden, I start swimming laps in Olympic-sized pools, going to one end, flipping under the water, going to the other side, flipping under the water, coming back. If you were looking for me, you could find me in the water. But this is for somebody who didn't know how to tread. You know, some of y'all think y'all can swim. I can swim underwater. You can't stay underwater in the ocean. You can't swim. I can swim. You can't swim. If I can swim a little bit and it's only underwater, you cannot swim. You can't stay on the water for so long. What if there's no size? Stop playing with yourself. You can't swim. You're not afraid of the water, but you can't swim. So what are you trying to tell us, Apostle? Start with the little things. In your authority in God, start with the little things. Start by holding on to the side a little bit. But go ahead and let yourself go. And start saying and speaking to stuff that's been challenging who you are in God. Stop allowing things to happen in your body that God has not authorized to happen. God, give me the discipline. 
to eat right. Give me the discipline to shut it down. Give me the discipline to rebuke this. I don't, I don't want to taste this. I don't. We got to start talking to this stuff because it does not have authority over us. In my, my next word, I'm going to talk about self-discipline in weeks to come because it's the key to everything. You got to have it. My wife will tell you most of that I stopped doing, whether it was eating a certain thing, whatever, I didn't have to wing myself off of it. I just say, I'm not going to do it anymore. I'm stopping today, and that's the day I stopped doing it. The only thing I had a problem with was some sneaker bars y'all kept bringing to me. But everything else, they just kept bringing. If I saw it, I wanted it. Now I got something that's sitting in the cabinet since last year sometime. They don't bother me. You open them up, they're probably white. They, I don't know what they look like inside. <laughs> My brother said, if they're white, they spoil. Uh, baby, I'm waiting on you to come and close the service out. You're getting away all our money. To the church. You're not going to close service? Amen. She busy. We're standing all over the building. Ah. Hear this. She called the Damashi. Hear the Damashi and the boat. God says as, as we begin to announce who we are in him. What are you saying? Well, as we begin to announce who we are in God, you don't have to tell anybody, but you announce this in your own atmosphere. I am the righteousness of God in Christ Jesus. You start, the Bible talks about David at a time when things were going bad for him. The Bible says that David encouraged himself in the Lord. He didn't have a group of people clapping for him and pushing him. He began to encourage himself. So God is saying to us in this hour, you're going to have to start speaking in your atmospheres. When stuff's not right with my wife and me, I'm speaking to the atmosphere. I'm not attacking her. I'm attacking whatever is in my atmosphere. My children are not getting along. And you know, I, I, God told me it, 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 it's one particular. God said, just be quiet. Just love them. Just love them. God, I've been trying to love them. They're hard here. Just love them. It's going to work. It's going to work. Start with the small things and watch God do the big things. Every head is bowed. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. We praise you. We honor you, Lord God, for the word that's been released in this place in the lives of the people, God. We thank you for the hearers of your word. But your Bible, your word tells us, let us not be hearers only but doers of this word. God, as we have embraced the fact that you've given us authority in the earth and in heaven, we ask for a boldness to exercise this authority. We ask for wisdom, God, where to apply this authority. God, we ask that you give us ideas and God plans to move forward so we may perfect who you called us to be in you. God, give us instructors and teachers God, give us people, God, that will not judge us for our shortcomings and our mistakes. God, that will train us as you have told parents to train their children in the fear and admonition of your word. God, give us the word to keep us. Give us the word to guide us. But most of all, God, give us the word to use as our authority. Satan, the Lord rebuke you. We take authority over everything that is not like God. Again, anything that has been sent, released, dropped, indicated, Lord God, or even signed off on, we send it back from which it came. We destroy everything, God, in the realm of the spirit that you have not built up. We tear down the middle wall of the enemy. We uproot every ungodly crop that's been planted. And we decree and declare a bumper crop of righteous God, righteous fruit. We thank you for it in advance. For your believers, Lord God, and for those that are non-believers, turn their hearts towards you today. Anyone that don't know you in the pardon of their sin, Holy Spirit, draw them today. Have them to confess with their mouth and believe in their hearts that Jesus is Lord and that they, they, they shall be saved. Thank you for the backslider returning to you today. For your word tells us you're married to the backslider. God, you never leave us, but you will allow us to leave. We thank you for restoration of relationships right now. In our homes, in our families. We thank you, Lord God. 
for this new realm of authority. We bless you for it. In your son Jesus' name, let every heart say amen. 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 And amen. For a final note, I want to say this. Don't let anyone talk you out of the place God places you. It's not about how perfect you are. God is about your heart towards him. But if your heart is right, he's going to, you're going to start walking in a different walk. It's got, it's got to be from the heart. And if your heart is right, people can't talk you out of your place in God. You'll lose some friends, but you'll gain some real ones. That's what I just said. You'll lose some so-called friends, but you'll gain some real ones. Let God shift your, let God shift your circle. Some people you've been re rejecting. Watch this. Some of us are rejecting people trying to connect to us because some of the people that are connected to you now are blocking you. They're more beneficial for you. Let the relationship die off so God can do some new things. In Jesus' name. We give you glory, God. We give you honor. We give you praise. Amen.